Harper, a 1966 mystery film, takes inspiration from Ross MacDonald's novel The Moving Target with screenplay adaptation by William Goldman. Starring Paul Newman as the private investigator Lou Harper, the film is directed by Jack Smite. The ensemble cast includes Robert Wagner, Julie Harris, Janet Lee, Shelley Winters, Lauren Buckhall, and Arthur Hill. Paying tribute to Humphrey Bogart's classic detective roles, Lauren Buckhall portrays a distressed wife on a quest to find her missing husband, echoing her role opposite Bogart in The Big Sleep. This film not only revisits the charm of the golden era of Hollywood mysteries, but also adds a twist when Paul Newman's character encounters an unexpected revelation from his past during the investigation. In the 1966 film Harper, Lou Harper is portrayed as a dedicated private investigator based in Los Angeles. His commitment to his profession takes a toll on his personal life, leading to the deterioration of his marriage. Amidst this personal turmoil, he is approached by Elaine Sampson with a request to undertake a case involving her husband, Ralph Sampson, who has mysteriously disappeared. The narrative follows Harper as he delves into the complexities of the case, uncovering layers of intrigue while navigating the challenges posed by his failing marriage. Now, tell me what you know. I found out that Eddie was in Las Vegas three years ago. In the 1966 film Harper, Elaine Sampson, who is physically disabled, harbors suspicions about her husband's fidelity. The family lawyer, Albert Graves, suggests hiring Harper for the investigation, driven by his own affection towards the Sampson's daughter, Miranda. Miranda, known for her flirtatious nature, shares a tense relationship with her stepmother, Elaine. This dynamic sets the stage for the unfolding narrative, where personal entanglements and professional duties collide, revealing the complexities of their relationships. Вчера, когда пришло письмо, я поняла, что мне на всё плевать. Это значит. In the 1966 film Harper, private investigator Lou Harper takes on a case that plunges him into the depths of Los Angeles CD underbelly. The assignment begins as a simple search for the wealthy Ralph Sampson, who has vanished without a trace. However, as Harper delves deeper, he encounters a series of suspicious and unsavory characters, each with their own secrets and agendas. The city's glittering facade fades away, revealing a dark network of deceit and corruption. Harper navigates through this perilous maze, piecing together clues and confronting danger at every turn. His relentless pursuit of the truth leads to the shocking revelation that Samson has been abducted, entangling Harper in a complex web of betrayal and criminal intrigue. The investigation tests Harper's resolve and cunning as he must outsmart those who wish to keep Samson's fate hidden and bring the perpetrators to justice. The film captures the essence of classic detective stories, showcasing the grit and determination required to solve a case amidst the chaos and conflict of a city's hidden dark side. Он был здесь? Нет. К моему сожалению, нет. During the production of the 1966 film Harper, director Jack Smite faced significant challenges that affected the overall atmosphere on set. His apparent lack of confidence was noted by many involved in the project, creating a tense environment. This uncertainty led him to seek support from his wife, which, rather than being seen as a personal coping mechanism, was viewed unfavorably by other members of the crew and cast. This reliance was interpreted as a professional weakness, casting a shadow over his directorial capabilities and contributing to a strained working relationship with the team. The impact of these dynamics was felt throughout the production process, influencing the interactions and daily operations on the set of Harper. In the 1966 film Harper, Paul Newman's confidence played a significant role in the production. His trust in the screenplay written by William Goldman was evident, as he appreciated its coherence and humor. This assurance was particularly important as it provided a balance to the director's own uncertainties. Newman's belief in the script's potential contributed to the film's dynamic, ensuring that the narrative was delivered with the intended wit and engagement. His ability to see the strength in Goldman's writing allowed for a performance that highlighted his own acting skills while also bringing out the best in his fellow cast members. The collaboration between actor and script is a key aspect of what made Harper a memorable film of its time. What's happening? Nothing. Arrest. 
William Goldman's confidence in his screenwriting career was significantly bolstered after he completed the opening sequence for the 1966 film Harbor. This sequence was crucial in forging a powerful bond between the viewers and the character of Harper. Goldman's approach to the script was to immediately draw the audience into the world of the private investigator Harper, played by Paul Newman. The film opens with Harper waking up in a disheveled room, setting the tone for a character who is down on his luck, but still sharp and capable. This introduction is not only engaging, but also serves as a clever narrative device, establishing Harper's personality and the film's tone right from the beginning. Goldman's skillful writing in this sequence demonstrates his ability to create a compelling narrative that captures the audience's attention and sets the stage for the unfolding mystery. In the 1966 film Harper, Paul Newman played the role of a private detective whose name was originally Archer in the source novels. However, Newman, who had a significant influence on the production, suggested changing the character's name to Harper. This decision was influenced by a belief that his previous successful films, which coincidentally started with the letter H, had brought him good fortune. Additionally, there were potential legal issues concerning the rights to the character's name, which further justified the change. The alteration from Archer to Harper was thus a strategic choice, blending superstition with practical considerations related to intellectual property rights. In the 1966 film Harper, Struther Martin took on the role of a cult leader. Despite Martin's reputation as a respected character actor, known for his performances in various other films, his portrayal in Harper was met with criticism. The narrator expressed that Martin's acting style and persona did not align with the expectations for the character, suggesting a disconnect between the actor's established image and the role's requirements. This opinion highlights the challenges in casting well-known actors in roles that diverge significantly from their typical screen persona, as audience preconceptions can influence the reception of their performance. The Beverly House, which featured as the Samson Estate in the 1966 film Harper, holds a significant place in cinematic history. This estate has been the backdrop for numerous films, most notably in The Godfather. Its architectural grandeur and the lush expanse of its grounds have made it a sought-after location for filmmakers looking to capture the essence of luxury and power. The house's design and its strategic location in Beverly Hills have contributed to its prominence in the film industry, serving as a symbol of wealth and status that aligns with the narratives of the movies it appears in. Harper, a mystery film starring Paul Newman, utilized the Beverly House to embody the opulence and mystery surrounding its characters, particularly the wealthy Sampson family. The choice of this location added a layer of authenticity and visual appeal to the film's storytelling, enhancing the audience's experience by providing a real-world connection to the fictional narrative. The 1966 movie Harper is a reflection of its era, showcasing elements that were characteristic of the time. One such detail is the use of steel cans for beer, which necessitated the use of a tool known as a church key to open them. This particular type of can opener was a common household item and a requisite for enjoying a cold beer. Another aspect the film highlights is the popularity of static tension exercises. During this period, these exercises were a prevailing fitness trend, emphasizing the use of one's own body weight and the tension of muscles to improve strength and health. The film's attention to these details not only situates it firmly in the 1960s, but also serves as a cultural snapshot, capturing the everyday lifestyle and practices of the time. The 1966 film Harper and its follow-up The Drowning Pool share a connection to the esteemed director Alfred Hitchcock through the casting of actresses who starred in his celebrated films. Harper features Janet Leigh, known for her role in Psycho, while The Drowning Pool includes Tippi Hedren from The Birds. This casting choice creates a bridge between the suspenseful style of Hitchcock's direction and the detective genre of Harper and its sequel. 
The presence of these actresses provides a subtle nod to the master of suspense and adds a layer of familiarity for audiences who appreciate Hitchcock's work. Ты ревнуешь, я вижу. Я постоянно вызываю в мужчинах желание. In a memorable television moment, years after the release of the film Harper, actress Shelley Winters appeared on the Tonight Show and amusingly forgot that she had worked with Paul Newman in the movie. This led to a light-hearted moment where Paul Newman playfully reminded her of their time together on set, highlighting their previous on-screen relationship. This exchange provided a glimpse into the camaraderie and shared experiences of actors beyond the screen, showcasing the sometimes forgetful yet endearing nature of human memory, especially in the busy lives of celebrated film stars. It also underscored the lasting friendships that can form between co-stars, which can lead to entertaining interactions long after the cameras have stopped rolling. Я слышала. Пусть говорит, что хочет. Он тянет, потому что надеется, что я изменю свое решение. 